Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni. Joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. And Colin, we are joined by the great Grant McCaslin, head basketball coach at uh, North Texas. Coach, how you doing, man? I, I feel like we're old at this point with how long I've, I've known you at this point. In my we are life. old. It's it's the real part is I'm getting older, much older, and you're still young, and don't get it twisted. You and Colin, <laughs> your best days are ahead of you, man. I'm on the downslope. So, uh, no, it is fun to be with you guys. Good to see your faces. I love your mean green on, too. Let's, let's, yeah. let's do this. Yeah, we had to, like I said, had to rock out. Yeah, no no journalistic integrity on this podcast. We will completely so, uh, be fans over North Texas basketball. I'm not, not working for CBS anymore or nothing. So... <laughs> We can just be fans. But, um, yeah, a lot to talk about. For those, I, I do want to plug real quick. Um, I talk, uh, We talked, uh, Grant and I talked on uh, the Zone Star State podcast, which is my Dave Campbell's uh, podcast. We did that back two months ago at this point uh, where we talked a bit about teams and, you know, you gave really good stories about different things from last year. So we won't touch on last year too much. Um, I'll leave the link to that in the description for anybody who wants to watch that. But that was an awesome interview. So, now we're about two weeks from the season, Coach. So we'll just talk about this year, this year's team, and getting into it. Um, where to start? I mean, now that you're two weeks from the season, obviously, what does it feel like you've been working with more of a blank canvas this year, you know, with obviously JJ and Thomas gone and the whole last regime, regime for, I mean, a lot of it pretty much gone. Uh, you still have Ruben and Abu at, and, and guys, but – does it feel like more of like a blank canvas for y'all over the offseason? I'll tell you, to give those guys credit, obviously Thomas and J.J. were two elite defenders, and I think the two of the best defenders in the history of North Texas basketball. Um, and, and a big reasons why we won. But if you turn the page and you look at this roster, uh, still a lot of great defenders. I mean, I, I think you got to look at, you know, a guy like Aaron Scott, who is a freshman, really learned how to impact winning. You know, Ruben Jones guarded the ball a lot uh, for us. So I think there's still a, a – and in, in as long as Coach Ross Hodge is, is the uh, is the defensive general here, and you know this, I mean, there's nobody better basketball coach, no matter if you're coaching defense, offense, the game. He just got a, an unbelievable level of experience. Um, and, and I think – defense will be our identity. So when you say a blank canvas, I think, honestly, I don't think it's starting blank. I feel like that with Abu and Tyler and Ruben, who played a lot of minutes, and then Aaron Scott, who stepped into that role, I mean, really, you got some great pieces that understand what it takes to be good. We're going to have to be good defensively. Um, so I'm excited because there's some carryover. And then guys like Matthew Stone, who have a year – where they don't have to do a lot more thinking they're reacting more because they've understood what we want to do. I mean, that foundation I think has been pivotal to us moving forward. Even Ruben Jones, not practicing a lot, but just his impact on our team has really been huge. And then the addition of the new guys does feel like a blank canvas because they're so pivotal. I mean, you know, Kai Huntsbury, Tyree Eady, Mulai Sissoko and Jaden Martinez those guys really have a lot of great basketball experience and they bring different things to the table. And one thing I, where I do think it's a blank slate is what we're doing offensively. I, I do feel like that that's a fresh start. Um, but defensively, I think we're right where we hoped we would be. And we're, we're definitely foundation defense first, which I think will always be the staple of this program. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, you know, J.J. And, and Thomas on defense. And I know a lot of the offense kind of ran through Thomas last year. You kind of already brought this up. But how do you plan on changing the offense this year a little bit? Well, y'all know we walked it up. And we, yeah. <laughs> we, committed, we committed we committed to walking it up like in the summer. I mean, we weren't even confused. Yeah. It was like when we turned the page, we knew Thomas and J.J. would be our most pivotal players, even though we had great players coming back. You know, this year we just haven't started that way. It doesn't mean that we won't, you know, kind of go both, but we've really been able to work the transition element into flow in our offense, where last year it literally was just walk it up and then play. And this year it's there's going to be more of a component. And I think why it's important is because it's easier to get the ball into Abu. And with Abu's um, 
progression, a lot of people are going to try to keep the ball from getting to him. And inside out basketball in college, you, you got to have different elements to get the ball to the paint. You can't just be, I, I, I believe you can't just be one way dominant. I think you, the best teams can throw it to the block and can play on the perimeter through, through whatever spacing means that you want to get the ball to the paint. And one way we feel like that we've been able to create an advantage is with our depth at that forward spot. Abu yeah. And Mulai and Jaden and, and a Scott just constantly putting pressure on the rim and transitions been a big ad. Kai Huntsbury that you'll see can he's um, he's JV on Hamlet physicality handling it, but maybe but a little more perimeter shooting uh, range score quicker and he's fast. And that's the one thing about like a uh, Mulai and y'all know a Scott and we haven't even gotten Ruben out there, honestly. So mm -hmm. it looks even more aggressive earlier in the clock. And we haven't even gotten Ruben in the mix just because we're waiting for him to get cleared from his knee, which yeah. we're getting closer. I mean, he's involved in some five on O, so we feel positive about his progression, but it's been fun to see just how that we've progressed offensively to be able to put pressure on defenses earlier. Yeah, because the whole thing with you and we talked about it in the Dave Campbell's podcast a little bit was you're always find a way to put pressure on the rim first and then play inside out, which I think obviously a lot of teams do. But when you lose Thomas and obviously a couple years ago is Javion, and so you go from Javion to Thomas, finding ways to put pressure on the rim with new players, uh, you kind of um, mentioned Abu with being one of those guys. Was that at all a project of being like, all right, who can attack the rim? Who can be patient enough to where when you get in the paint, then you can still operate? Because not a lot of players, when they get in the paint, distributing from there is not easy. So uh, what was that like for y'all? Well, it, it starts with the fundamentals in the summer, and we've had this plan in place since we got everybody. I mean, it was kind of the way we recruited was to say, hey, we're going to play more open. Um, I wouldn't call it um you know euro motion you know where you have the two yeah. forwards flashing all the way in the middle very similar to arizona and the way they play and you know i've talked to tommy lloyd at arizona extensively jeff lender at wyoming extensively and uh ben mccollum i mean those are three guys that i just use as a resource besides obviously the guys at baylor i just talk to them you know all the time to try to get different ideas on how to do it and Tommy at, at Arizona has been really helpful and given us this flow motion concept where you know I think that's the underrated part of getting Tyler mm -hmm. open because Tyler can really shoot it mm -hmm. and so he was most effective at the end of these games when he was shooting the ball up top but like how do you get him more where he's catching it with the ability to shoot instead of having to dribble all the time and that's where we've been the last few years we've kind of been more dribble and now i think with the ability to move it quicker and and you'll just see i think more flow motion type with a lot of people touching the ball that's kind of what you'll see yeah. that's different and involving those forwards where they are flashing and playing in the middle of the floor more regularly, as opposed to what y'all have seen, which is two guys kind of in the middle of the floor or Thomas in a dribble down, you know, it's JV on and, and Zach and Thomas in the middle with everybody playing off of them. This is going to be a little more true motion, moving the ball side to side, trying to get ball reversals and doing it early in transition with an emphasis of throwing it in, to the mismatch on the block, whether it be a boo, you know, Jaden, uh, Mulai, it, uh, that's kind of the change that we'll have. It won't just have a, a you know, a two player high usage rate dominated game. It'll have more of an open concept and it's been good so far for us. I think we'll have to commit to it and get better. It'll have its growing pains, but I, I, I am excited about the way we can play with multiple guards. Tyree Eady is a great addition to us also. So yeah. you, you just talk about having four ball handlers. We've just never had this many guys that I feel like are positive assist to turnover guys makes a big difference when you can play the game and a lot of guys can touch it and make simple plays. Yeah, I mean, last year we saw a lot whenever it got close. I mean, La Tech, it worked whenever Tyler had to, you know, dribble up and, and hit the big shot. And it's going to be nice to see, you know, him have a shot already ready for him. And um, how do you see how do you see him, I guess, 
kind of fitting in with these new guards? And then how do you see Ruben, you know, because Ruben obviously and, and Bruni and I have talked about this since he's been here. You know, when he's in the open floor, he just kind of he sees everything. It almost seems like, you know, that flashy pass. I think Bruni brought it up on that uh, Zone Star State <laughs> podcast where it's like behind the back, you know, to the corner. And I was like, wow. That was um, as a freshman. Yeah, yeah, as a freshman. So, you know, are, are, are we going to be seeing more of those opportunities for like Ruben and, and I guess Tyree and other guys? Yeah, I think what you'll see is Kai's really been a, a ball handler for us in transition. And obviously, we haven't played Ruben since the summer. I mean, yeah. we had him in July running through this system early July, but then that was it. And so we haven't seen him in this live. It'll take some time for him. I mean, y'all know he's good downhill, but it's also how do you get back into that flow and pace of just to Bruni's point, getting in there and not feeling like you got to hit home runs, having some patience when you get in there. So maybe the pace is played with more pace, but your patience is still to make the simple play. And I think it'll just take some time. That's where I think there'll be some growing pains. Uh, but how it impacts Tyler specifically is what we found in this flow is the ball's going in and out more more times it's going to the post it's coming out it's getting moved and he's in a lot more catch and shoot scenarios as opposed to having to dribble to shoot and just the ball's finding him off cuts off movement and it's really freed him up i think to to get shots off without having to 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 create them himself like the offense is creating opportunities and that'll be the emphasis that i think what you'll see going forward with this team is you know, how do you create more ball reversals and, and how do you get more paint touches through ball reversals as opposed to uh, confusing teams and trying to be more um, NBA, take advantage of mismatches, come down and try to manipulate defenses to get the matchups we want and then attack. I think we're just trying to recognize those the the more we move the ball and make it a part of more flow than as is a part about coming down and just trying to attack one individual player and playing stagnant yeah now i mean now that we know i mean the team a little bit more i was curious because i've talked to now over over here at lsu obviously kim mulkey and then there's i've had will wade last year now matt mcmahon and i i've never really talked to you about this but the non-conference scheduling for y'all last year was pretty difficult obviously i mean you go down that wichita state you had the tournament on espn all that stuff what is your approach to non-conference scheduling because it's different for y'all obviously than it is at like you know the sec level wherever where these wins could potentially be a difference in like an at-large bid even but at the same time you want to give your team confidence and you know so you have to balance that how do you approach non-conference scheduling you're asking, I think, the million dollar question. I think if you're if you're building a program, it's like recruiting, scheduling, coaching in that order, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, people like who you have in your program is very important. Like who and then how you schedule and then coaching's kind of fills in the gaps. And yeah. the scheduling component here at North Texas has developed. So at first, I people knew we were a difficult game. But people buying us, they were a little more interested in buying us at the high major level. Yeah. And I think to y'all's point, you got to get quad one games. And how do you get quad one games at our levels? You have to go play road games for money. That's yeah. the bottom line. And then when you go past that, you try to get – we've found that neutral games give you the best chance to get those quad one, quad two games – against quality opponent, which is what we had last year in Kansas and Miami. And then Drake. I mean, those were really good games for yeah. us. And those games being the neutral sites, obviously. So we've tried to get neutral site games. Um, and we've tried to get road games. And as we've gotten better, like no one wants to come to North Texas. So yeah. that's out the window. I mean, like <laughs> getting the home game, um, we've had to buy – teams to get home games and we've had to put them in difficult spots so we base everything around our 
MTE or multi-team event. That's how we base mm -hmm. our schedule. And that's been the hardest component to get involved in. We got fortunate to play in the ESPN event because we were supposed to actually play in my, in Hawaii in the Christmas tournament, but because of COVID that got pushed back and then they moved us into the event because to coach self's credit, no one wanted to play us. I mean, we probably had 10 times ESPN was like, and the only team that would play us in the first round was Kansas. Um, Coach Shelf was just like, he'll play anybody, you know, like most people wouldn't play us on a neutral site. Yeah. On an event. So you try to get in these events, but nobody wants to play you on a neutral site because of style of play probably. And because we're really good defensively. Yeah. So we've had to try to get road games and to give coach Musselman credit. I mean, he's wanted to play us pretty much every year. Aside from that, man, St. Mary's wanted to play us this year. No other road games. No one else would play us at home, even for money to pay us to come play. Yeah. That's so it's, then it's, we had to get neutral site games with Grand Canyon. And you know what you end up playing is mid majors that other high major teams don't want to play oh, either. Right. So Grand you just kind of end up there. trying to find that in between team, you know, that is on the fringe of top 100 and to try to get a quad two game out of it. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the best we could get. And actually, to give Arkansas credit, they tried to play us again this year, but we couldn't make the date work. They wanted to play us the day we came back from our our Bahamas, uh, Bahamas trip, and it was just no way to like land and play the game. It would just been it wouldn't put our guys in a very good position. And then we've and then they wanted to play us right before Fresno State, and that would have been like a Friday, and then we played Fresno, I think, like on a Saturday or something. It was like no day in between. It just yeah. that wouldn't work either. So, you know, you want to give your team the best chance to win, and we had to buy Fresno to get them to come here. And they're in a tough situation because they their athletic department needs money. And so they have to play a lot of buy games, unfortunately. And they have a hard time getting games, too, because of the way they're great defensive teams. So we just have found, like, neutral site games gives you the best chance to kind of get those quad games. Other than that, our only real quad one game to start the season is going to be at St. Mary's. Man, that's, it's, that's so interesting. It's yeah, so I, interesting to hear that I, dynamic. Because, I, I like I said, last year, Will Wade was always was big analytically about, you know, how to go about things like that. Um, but they, so he was scheduled like Bel Belmont and, you know, teams like that, that were good, but that LSU would obviously beat. And so they started the year 15 and zero, and then they get like 60 because all the metrics. And then this year it's like, I talked to Kim Mulkey and Matt McMahon and both of them are like, we just want to give our team confidence. But in my head, I'm like, all right, you have the luxury of doing that because you play in the SEC. So that's why from your perspective, it's interesting. It will, it will help if you want to also transition a little bit there it's like it helps the conference usa is down to 11 teams and you have like five teams that are legitimately i haven't checked the kimpon but like fau western uab y'all like middle like it's going to be one hell of a conference too yeah and coach wade to give him credit lsu i mean that year that we had covid we were supposed to play him mm -hmm. we had we had a contract with him we were going to play him because he was trying to get the best teams he could to get and you know it's like hey you want to play him at home and he he had really studied you know scheduling and tried to get as high of yeah. a net ranking as he could and trying to beat opponents that had but quad one and quad two games are the only way to do it yeah and if you're a quad three at home it really doesn't help you mm -hmm. so that's where like us last year it would have been a it could have been a quad two home game as you know, we were close to that top 50 mark. Uh, yeah. So anyways, long story short, man, it's been quite a difficult process and really you have to base everything about what MTE you get in. And we've been hustling hard to try to get as many good games on a neutral court. We're excited about the Bahamas trip you got San Jose state in the first round, but then you got, you know, Oakland, uh, uh, in the second round, I'm trying to think, I haven't, they, I haven't done my research on that. Who they play that in the first round? It's it's two Oakland really good games. Yeah. Uh, Missouri State's in it. Vermont's in it. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it's real as far as that level of team. You know, there's going to be some really quality opponents. So we're just excited to play quality opponents and get an experience for our guys. Sorry, were you going to ask a question, Bernie? No, go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and kind of bouncing off of the eleven teams in in conference now, is it? Is it almost kind of 
weird knowing that you're not going to be in this conference next year? You know, when you think about, you know, the AAC, is, is there any thought into that in terms of where you want to be at next year? Or is it only focused on this conference year? I mean, we're just doing nothing other than trying to prepare ourselves budget wise for the move forward. I mean, just talking to the administration about making sure we're prepared to make the jump. It has nothing to do with next year. I mean, like we're not even, that's yeah. not even, I mean, I think I mean, we just want to make sure we have, we, we understand the need as far as resources are concerned, but like, you know, Ren and Jared are the best. So they're, they know what they're doing. I mean, that discussion yeah. is the only thing that I think is just like, how do we make sure we're prepared on that end of it? And they're taking care of that. I mean, our focus is a hundred percent on this year in this league. Yeah. I mean, like when you, when you talk recruiting, people want to know where you're going. Those are the only specific conversations that that may have some impact because you show maybe where we've been in the past and we would have been top three or four. If you just go off of where we finished the last couple of years, we'd been in the top four uh, as far as a net ranking in, in both years. Uh, and then you look at our league and like y'all said it, I mean, this league this year is really unique. It's like the, it's like the big 12. You're playing 11 teams. You, you you got a true home and home schedule, which is awesome. Um, so I think that that I'm excited about. I know a lot of people have their opinions on it. I think you get a true champion. I mean, obviously, when you play them in the schedule and how many games you have before affects it, right? If you've been on the road three times and then you got to play a really tough opponent the third road game, it just is what it is. But I'm excited about it. And we poured our whole heart into this league. We're in Conference USA. And – We've been blessed to win three championships, whether it be regular season or tournament. And these guys are only talking about how we can win this year. And in college basketball, you're thinking too far past that you're missing because yeah. there's too much change on the other side of it, man. Control what you can control and be ready and play the schedule. And nobody's seen a schedule for next year. So nobody cares about that schedule. We know what ours is for this year and we are committed to this team and we're really excited about this team and, look forward to a very difficult conference schedule. I forgot to bring it, bring up the, in the non-conference conversation, I was like, man, you got to get, get Reem on the phone, get, get K-State down there. <laughs> I don't care what we got to pay them, but come on, I'll man. Start to go fund me. Come on, man. You know, they're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they wouldn't even, I mean, I are not, they're not playing us in Manhattan either. So if you can't get yeah. them, to, if we can't get them to play us there, you know, they're not going to play <laughs> us here. And I shouldn't say that because coach Tang and I are friends. So I really wouldn't want to play those guys at their place. You know, I mean, yeah. that just that part of the game, it's, it's hard enough to win games, much less be people that you, that you, you love and respect, yeah, you yeah. know? And so that's, part of that is the, the difficulty of all this is, his there's friendships involved too. And when you have to play them, you just play them and it is what it is. But if you get yeah. to pick, you know, those are the games you try not to try not yeah. to get involved in. I, um, I have, I have written down here <laughs> is uh, you lose Thomas, JJ and Maya and all of them were like 26 years old. And yet you still have an extremely old team here. Uh, do you feel that it's the same type of veteran leadership with the, I mean, with this team, obviously with, with that type of turnover? And we talked about JJ on the, and Thomas on the last podcast, but does it feel the same with the veterans on this team? It really does. Uh, it does. It, it doesn't have the level because you know this. Thomas JJ was here for four years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they were all and, old. They're so. <laughs> and Thomas was here for three and played in the NCAA tournament. So. But this team, because Jaden has played four years of college basketball, Tyrese played 40, four years of college basketball, Kai's played college basketball, Mulas, I mean, like, these guys have played a lot of college basketball. So it's not experience where they can tell each other what we expect, but there is, there is a level of expectation they have at every practice. And they all came from great programs, and they all compete hard every day, which that part I think is – vital to the experience factor so it doesn't have the same edge that those guys brought thomas and you know because you know truth be told abu and um reuben are the ones with the most experience that returned for us and reuben's not practicing right now so i think if reuben were out there more consistently he, even though he's amazing as a teammate i think it would have 
that feel that we had more last year, but it's been still a lot of learning. Yeah. You know, I mean, and especially on the defensive side of the ball, it's been a lot more learning, uh, but it's been positive. It hadn't been a negative learning. It's just maybe doesn't have the, the, the same edge that those guys brought every day. It's close though. It's yeah. close. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Colin? Uh, no, I think I asked all my questions. Coach, what was the highlight of your summer? Did you go on a trip? Did you do anything? Hey, uh, good question. Skydive or anything? No. Uh, but I will tell you, the other team that we that is in Oakland on that second round is Long Beach State, which is J.J. Murray's brother, which yeah. is cool. You yeah. know, and they're obviously a really good team, and they had great success. Coach Munson's good. So that's what I was saying. I think our schedule's really tremendous in regards to quality games. May not have like that – Kansas factor to it, but I do feel like there's quality games in there at UMass at Grand Canyon, both in good venues and good places. But highlight of the summer, man, you know what? Um, we we ended up there's a there's a lake close to here that we ended up uh, taking getting a boat and being able to go hang out here. So I didn't actually go a lot of places. My daughter is weirdly enough an elite rock climber. So she went to nationals in Chicago, um, which is cool. cool. Uh, she was she's one of the top rock climbers in the United States for her age group, which is awesome. And um, and so when we got together, we would go to the lake, which, you know, my boys, they play hoops and they play football and they play everything. But they love basketball. So we're always busy going to these sporting events. And one thing we got to do as a family is go to the lake a few times. And we have a we did surfing, which is not as hard on your body as the rest of it. So it was a blast. Um, we took Mulai and uh, Chris Morgan surfing this summer, which was unbelievable. Neither one of them had been skiing or any type chris yeah. had never even been in a lake and he literally chris Kristen morgan literally crawled onto the boat on his hands and knees from the dock <laughs> he was so scared and literally wouldn't get in the water and we started in the morning but by the time we got to the end of the day he was surfing he literally got up behind wow the boat. It was really really cool man so you know i think that's the thing that's underrated about college is everybody wants to be in the NBA, but you just there's not the same camaraderie. I mean, that's whatever all of Zach. You know, you look at the success that all these guys are having. They're winning. They talk about getting stops and the tougher team wins. It was cool. I heard the Thomas yeah, Bell interview that. after they won. Just these dudes are about winning, but it's hard because there's this pro edge that people aren't as close. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, it's transactional. You know, it's more like a business. It's uh but the best teams, as you know, don't approach it that way but yeah. as you know also a lot of it is that way hey, you don't play good good we'll just get somebody else and college is more like hey we're in it you know you're gonna be here for four years or maybe two years and transfer markets making that a little more difficult but i think the camaraderie is the most fun part so being able to go so coach hodge and his son we went surfing for a day and you know i mean that part's been fun because it's close enough to where we can get out there and spend some time without it being like all hoops and our guys have been able to enjoy that part of it and I look forward to going to the lake. I love fishing. So bass fishing and bass yeah. fishing and surfing, man. Lake life in the summer. It's pretty uh pretty good. Yeah, come come down to the bayou, man. Uh next summer. <laughs> we'll 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 go fishing. <laughs> I don't have a coastal edition on the boat, man. I know there's some fresh water down there, but you'll have to come up here and we'll do some okay. fishing up here. But I do love fishing, so i I I jump in on that game though. Okay. All right, yeah, I'll have to get it. Um last thing, because you you brought it up. Uh how, you, you we talked uh on the phone, I don't even know how long ago this was. You sent me a highlight video of your son sh shooting three or uh, playing, obviously. And dude, can't can't miss from three. Um, I haven't got an update on it, so I'll be waiting for the next highlight uh, compilation here. If you got to put that together one night, I'm waiting for it. I will, I will. Now you'll see. He's he. They love hoops, man, and that's the joy of all this. Like, do what you love to do. You know, I don't try to push him on. He wakes up every morning at six a.m. and goes to the gym and shoots and. And uh, that that part, I think, is the part that we all know, man, these days you can't make people do things that they don't love. So finding people that love what they do and you guys love what you do. That's what I love talking to you guys. Like always Luke's like, hey, you want to talk to uh, Colin and Bruni? I'm like, yes, man, those dudes love hoops, man. They want to talk some basketball like 
you changed a lot of what happened here at North Texas. You guys did because of your love for it. Bernie, you'd sit there and watch every practice, man. You watch the, the <laughs> worst crazy. Season, the practices, the grimiest ones, no, no excitement. Oh, and great. you know, I think that's what I love about our kids, man. And anybody in life, like if you can encourage, that's why my daughter loves rock climbing. She plays basketball, but she doesn't love it. So just, you know, invest doing what you love. Yeah. And if you do what you love, you find a way to make money doing it eventually, you know, yeah. and if you don't, you find a niche to do it. And that's what you guys, have done man so yep. appreciate you guys having me on and thanks for asking about that for sure well, all right uh everybody uh i hope y'all enjoyed the interview subscribe if you haven't already leave a five-star rating review wherever you are listening and uh we will talk to y'all later